Hello, in this video, I want to talk about the new Houdini 19 Pyro features. So this video is more of an exploration and, and beginner introduction to the Pyro features. Myself, I'm also a beginner to the Pyro simulations of Houdini. So let's just jump into it. So in Houdini, we want to start out with a geometry network. And in here, I already want to load in a pre-made example so we can start from something and look a bit about how that was built. So if you just type tap and then type in Pyro, we can see a couple Pyro features and, and notes that we have. So we can have our solver, but there are some pre-made examples like the fireball, bonfire, uh, or the, the torch, uh, ground explosion, the missile flash, or here we have the GPU ground explosion, which I'm going to use. So I'm going to click that. Uh, but you can see that there are multiple nodes here to, to try out and, and see what, what they will be doing and how they can be used. So for now, let's just, for example, grab one of an example of the ground explosion. And that should load in a moment. So here I have that ground explosion. So it's already made four of the nodes. And when I press play, we should see something like this. So it should see an explosion on the ground. So this is a pretty cool explosion. And again, this is the GPU version, which means it's going to be pretty fast. As you can see, like this is real time. I can just play it back and just in real time see how that explosion went. So let's talk a bit about how this was set up. So it all started here, in this case, with a single point in the middle of the scene. And from that, it's going to uh, do a pyro bursting source. And if we look at the first frames, uh, you can see that there will be a bunch of points uh, sort of like bursting or spamming in a certain direction. Uh, and if you are familiar with Houdini, then you might know that if you look to the geometry spreadsheet, it will have a lot of data stored on each point. So each point has, for example, the V from velocity or have a certain temperature value or have a certain scaling or density value. So that's basically what this node is doing. It's adding, for example, velocity data uh, to points. So this then might be used in the solver. Now, after this pyro source, it's actually getting turned into a volume. Uh, and in here, the volumes uh, are created are density, temperature, burn, and V. So if I hold middle mouse button, I can see that we have burn, density, temperature, and V. So these are three, uh, four volumes uh, made by this node. So with that result, if we then use that in the Pyro solver, we get then this explosion. Now let's talk a bit about the Pyro node itself. So we have multiple tabs here where we have each some interesting values. So the first one is the setup. And already here, if you feel like your simulation is not running that smoothly, I recommend increasing the value. So the bigger this value, the bigger the voxel. So that will mean you will have less voxels. So if I just double this, uh, you will see that my quality might be lower but it will run way smoother and it's just at a higher fps so it's just interesting now for playing around doing experimentations at a lower quality and later you can always just uh, fine tune that a bit more uh, to actually get better results now here then we also have our OpenCL, uh, which is then the gpu mode so sort of faster mode and then we also have the bounce here so this is that cage you see. So everything in here will be simulated. If my explosion will come out of that, it won't happen because of the bounce set. Then we also have the sourcing. So we have our sourcing volumes here, like the temperature, density, velocity. And also here is the sourcing range, which will also be interesting. Then we have our collision. So our second input here is actually the collision. So if I hover on that, you will see it's a collision. Then we have our fields. So we have the density, temperature, flame, color, speeds, and you can also view what's going on. So if you uh, use the new guide systems, uh, we can, for example, see the density here on the side. So this can be useful for some debugging or, or fine tuning or actually finding out what certain volumes are doing. So you can look at that. So let's say no guides here. Then we have the shapes. So this is some extra influence on what can happen in the simulation. Uh, like the buoyancy or for example adding like a wind force so it actually blows like a small wind in here uh, or like disturbance and turbulence so to like actually disturb the shape a bit and again there are some guides here you could play around with to see uh, what is going on uh, so this is interesting to play around with then we have the look so the actual visual look of the simulation so we have the smoke amount so if i 
lower this, we will not have any smoke. If I increase this, we can see that we are pushing that smoke in there. Then we have the fire, and here is actually the color of that fire. We can also change this from color ramp to the physical black body. I can play around with that as well. And yeah, so here are some interesting settings for like a first visualization of that. Then we have the advanced options, not really going to go and talk about too, that, too much about that. And then we have the export options, uh, also not going to talk about too much about that. So then we have uh, all of this. We also have the quick settings here, which can be interesting. So we can initialize certain things. Uh, we can quickly add lights or pyro look or, for example, quickly add the cache system. Uh, so that might be interesting to, uh, to also look at and, and play around with. Now let's jump into making our own uh, simulation or setup and let's do something basic. For example, let's play around with the test geometry of the pig head. So we can use the pig head over here. Maybe I need to uh, increase uh, the uh, scaling. So let's say tree. I don't need the shader here exactly. So we have this. And what we need to do now if we would look at this setup is we actually need to output a certain volume. Uh, you could try to just copy paste this uh, over here that will work um, but what is also interesting what I found is we can actually use the cloud nodes um, it's probably not super recommended doing this uh, but it's it's working so that's just great because this is also just essentially voxels and volumes that we have the cloud noise that we can add on this so we have the cloud node making the cloud and then the noise is actually adding a noise so if I play around with the amplitude I can actually see actually disturb the shape a bit more like this so maybe we can here make the shape a bit more interesting before the simulation itself. Uh, and after that, I can already now plug in the pyro uh, solver here. So pyro solver, and we just plug in that uh, shape. So one of the first things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this to the minimal OpenCL. And let's press play to see what we are getting. And this is basically what we are getting. So it spawns the volume and fades set out. Uh, again here we want to maybe increase the voxel size a bit for now just because it will work way faster um, and let's also check the bounds but i don't think we need to uh, change the bounds here uh, maybe make it a bit bigger so we can just hold with the mouse and maybe stretch that out a bit so we have a bit more volume to work with when we apply some more cool effects then we have the actual sourcing uh, and i want to go and talk about the sourcing range so the reason why we had that uh, fading effect, so if I press play, uh, is because of the range here. So after frame 12, we will stop spawning volume uh, and it will actually just turn into nothing. So you could see here after frame 12, you would sort of like start that fade out. So if I change this from frame range to static frame, it will basically mean that we will constantly spawn the volume. So it will not disappear anymore. Uh, then let's jump into our shapes. So here we can immediately, for example, apply a wind force. So this will just add wind. So let's increase that and see how much that will uh, take effect. And this might be a bit too much. And maybe we want it to be in the Z axis. So let's set this to 0, 0, and then minus 1. So it's actually blowing uh, like so in you know, the front of his face. Uh, then there are some other things we can add. Uh, and I think a disturbance might be interesting to play around with since it will add a bit more uh, noise in the shape, as you could see. The cool thing also about the GPU mode is that it's more interactive. So it's real in real time, I can now tone this back down or tone this back up. So we can see that we can have some interesting noising here going on. So this looks already pretty nice. Uh, and you can play around with the other other settings here as well. So I recommend, for example, disabling uh, a couple of these and then just, for example, checking out uh, one individual to actually see what's going on on what it is doing. So that might be interesting to uh, to just double check. Um, then I already want to basically do something a bit more advanced. So right now I just apply to basic wind and some disturbance, uh, which is cool. But now let's do something uh, which is the axis force. So the axis force for that, I will actually need to double click on the pyro node. And here we can do something a bit more advanced. So this is already something where you want to customly add a certain feature. 
uh, like the axis force. So here we have the gas axis force. And we want to plug this in, and of course, a force. So this is a force, and uh, we're plugging this in the forces. So if we now click on our handle here, we should see a small tube like this. And we're going to make sure to rotate this. So either press R for rotation. We can then rotate this in this direction and then press D to move this to, for example, here somewhere in the middle. And then we can just grab this tube and scale it up uh, and make sure, for example, it's covered uh, by the whole simulation here. So now let's reset and see if that does anything. And if you look closely, it, do, it gives a little twist to my uh, simulation, but it's very subtle. So the force will, or the twist will happen in, in according to this arrow. So let's change some settings now. So this is the settings of the gas force. So the first one is the suction. So this will force it to the single point. So if I, for example, uh, put in like 50, which is quite high value, it will basically as you can see, force the volume into the single point here of this uh, of this thing. I can also, while the simulation is playing, I can just grab this and start to move this around. So next up, we can also do axis force. So here we can enable the axis force. So we have speed and strength. And I noticed with this is one of the interesting things to play around with is actually the speed range. It goes from zero to one, but what if it goes from zero to, for example, 50? So we have much more uh, speed values. And you can see that we will create something like this, uh, which is quite interesting here. So I'm actually now forcing that, that away from this. So maybe let's do a minus 50 uh, to see what we're getting. This is maybe too much intense, so maybe do minus 10. And then also, what if we do some orbiting force? And this is where the, it gets even more interesting. And I'm gonna do quite similar like I did with the axis force, I'm going to set the speed range to, for example, something bigger, like maybe also 20 to start with and see what it gives us. And you can see that we now have a more interesting effect. So now it's really orbiting as well. So this is a pretty cool uh, effect, as you can see. And again, we can just grab this and, and then play around uh, with where this effect should be. Uh, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So if you want to go crazy, I can recommend you filling in, for example, 100 in here, and then you will have something like this. And this looks already pretty cool, uh, in my opinion. So this is a pretty cool note to play around with if you want, like, this twisting of volumes uh, to play around with. So we can now just go back to the Pyro Solver. So now we have our results. Uh, and let's say that I want to fade out this big hat uh, after a certain time. That's where I'm going to go back to sourcing and we're going to say from static frame to frame range and now it will just fade out as you can see. So now it will just fade out which is a cool effect and quickly done so it just took, a, took us a few minutes to set this up. Uh, we can of course increase the frame range so it, after frame 12 we stop spawning the big head. So we can for example say after frame uh, 30 for example so it will take a bit longer so normally it should take a bit longer and then it will fade out so that's pretty cool uh, to play around with now the other thing to finish this off would be then the actual visual look so we can go to the look um, and then we have our colors to play around with so I don't see that red color uh, appear and, and one of the reasons for that is if I go to the bindings uh, it's the fire is based on, so the fire here is based on our, our own flame volume. So in this case, uh, my input only holds like density, uh, but if you look at the pyro setup here, it actually holds more information. Uh, and maybe if we look at how they set up the look here, we can also see here that the fire is based on the temperature. So let's change our uh, fire intensity uh, to density and normally that should give you something now so if I now press play we should have something like this so of course let's tweak some of the values so maybe you can just do compute range uh, and then let's play again and that's a bit better so that's a bit more balanced 
uh, we can always manually start to tweak, for example, the intensity here, like how much we want this. We also can push, for example, as you can see, like the smokes, this looks a bit cooler, I think. So we have something like this. Uh, and again, uh, if you want to make this a bit more magical or, or change colors over time, uh, we can, for example, do um, multiple colors here. Maybe something like this. So it looks a bit more interesting. This is basically what I want to show. So now we can already play around with some of the basic Pyro features. So you know a bit how the solver works. Uh, but now bringing this to a game engine would be then a whole other thing to, to talk about. Uh, there are multiple ways, like for example, rendering a flipbook. So you will render multiple images and then you just display those images in a game engine. Definitely keep an eye out on the ZFX Lab toolset for bringing this into game engine. I will maybe link it later here uh, when there is more information. What, what we can also now do to render this is we can either, for example, uh, do a viewport render. We can, for example, do also a flipbook here, so we can render flipbook. Or if you want to do a, like an actual render, uh, we can now go to setups and we can quickly create a render stage. So if we click render stage, we can say what daylight we want it to be. So maybe let's pick sunrise. Uh, and then after a couple of seconds, we will actually have a render mode. So now we are in the render stage. I can now switch from Houdini to Karma, uh, and we will now actually have then uh, a renderer. So as you can see, we are now rendering out uh, this volume. So yeah, I'm not super familiar with rendering out things, uh, so I would recommend you checking out another video for that. But if you want to render this, this is basically already how you could start approaching that. So you can start now rendering out this volume and, and have and have actually like a decent render instead of like a viewport render. So that was it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.